Hey, wonderful people. I learned something a bit distressing today about US Air Force drone pilots. Now, being a drone operator is very stressful. Drones themselves probably have automated flying systems to keep them level and in the air while in the battlefield, but it still takes human eyeballs to spot the target. Staring at monitors for long shifts, looking for incredibly small but relevant detail is very demanding. But that's not what this film's about. This film's about how electricity can alter your brain. How is that connected? People around the world are strapping batteries to their heads to supercharge their brains. Are you looking to boost your brain? Or perhaps you've heard about the many studies done on depression, anxiety, brain injury, or chronic pain, such as fibromyalgia and migraine. Electrical brain stimulation is a tested and proven technology found in universities and clinics around the world. Meet the corporate world of TDCS. Transcranial direct current stimulation, or TDCS, and it involves using electric currents to stimulate your brain. To me, this sounded a bit quacky, corporate, and hoaxy. Health professionals dealing with people with severe mental illness can treat them by altering their brain waves. And here it gets really interesting. It's used by the military. If coffee just doesn't seem to be enough sometimes to get your brain charged, how about a dose of electricity? The Air Force Research Lab is researching a transcranial direct current stimulation, or TDCS, as a potential means to help airmen stay alert and sharp during critical missions. But it's used in a very counterintuitive way. In fact, it's used in its opposite way. Watch this clip, and I'm going to freeze it at a relevant moment from this doctor. What if there was a simple way to enhance your alertness, your attention to detail, boost your ability to focus, and even your capacity to learn and retain new information? No, this isn't some late night infomercial pitch or Hollywood sci-fi plot. There's actual scientific research that shows this is possible with the help of just a few strategically placed electrodes. And much of the study in this field is happening at the Air Force Research Lab in Ohio. At the Applied Neuroscience Branch of the Air Force Research Lab's Human Performance Wing, Dr. Andy McKinley and his team are conducting an experiment. Uh, we're putting a couple of electrodes on the body, one on the head, one on the arm, and we pass a really weak current in between, and the current makes it easier or harder for the neurons underneath to, to fire, or the brain cells to fire. So you can either increase activity by making it easier for the neurons to fire, or you can reverse the polarity and make it harder for those neurons to fire and therefore decrease activity. Hear how he said, reversing the polarity? Now in this story, I'll be the first to admit I don't really know the big picture. If you know more, let us know in the comments. But let's get back to drone operators, snipers, and pilots. Now, we don't normally associate combat fatigue with sitting in front of a computer console, but it's real and it's a growing concern. The modern RPA program began in 1995, and it took 16 years for the Air Force's drone fleet to log 1 million flying hours. But by late 2013, only two and a half years later, that number had doubled. Today, RPA crews are logging three times more flying hours per year than traditional pilots. So yes, combat fatigue is a real threat to the mission. So we now know that TDCS stimulates different parts of the brain to help with people with problems. But a DARPA study revealed you can use it to do the opposite, suppress the human brain. What I'm gonna say now is a staggering piece of information. 
a sniper, a pilot, and specifically drone operators are being experimented on to cut out distractions, to focus the brain. So TDCS apparently can not only stimulate, but also suppress distractions. Imagine you're a sniper waiting for hours for a target and there's bird song and you're wondering what you're gonna have for supper and just your girlfriend really loves you and oh I've just missed the target well that wouldn't work how about making their brain focus on what their job is and that's what DARPA are experimenting with. The scientists at the research lab's Applied Neuroscience branch are committed to optimizing the cognitive performance of the warfighter. And as the Air Force leans harder on its image analysts, sensor operators, and RPA pilots, that mission becomes more important than ever. Warfare in and of itself is a human endeavor. And if we can enhance the human piece of that, their ability to think and to make decisions, uh, this could really give us uh, a strategic advantage in the future. And possibly they're doing the same thing to help concentration on pilots and very specifically drone operators. Sitting for long shifts, monitoring this tedious screen, looking for a minute detail. You don't want to be distracted by stray thoughts. So there's experiments going on where their brain waves are suppressed to help them focus on the one task they're hired to do. And that's all I know, but there's more to this story than meets the eye, and you are the ones to share it. Because of you, the truth is out there. It seems the Army had taken advantage of Buster's childlike interest in games. <laughs> this is so much more fun than just the fur. And his childlike inability to distinguish between games and reality. Ah! <laughs> so they set him up as a drone pilot here. You want to go to lunch, Private Blues? Not till I take you out the hospital! I tell you, this kid's amazing. If I had him back in the 60s, Cuba would be the 51st state. You're not gonna get away from me, little nurse. <laughs>